Welcome back to the channel for what if Cesar Refemi had survived Halo 2. <clears throat> so, in this video I'm just gonna continue reading off of what I had left from my Halo 2 part 1. <clears throat> so let's just get right into this and let's see how you like it. Moving to Halo 3 timeline. When Chief was found, it would go as canon. He nearly kills Arbiter, they work together and mow down brutes and grunts alike. Cease stayed back at the base, helping the rest of the Marines to keep the Covenant from fighting them. Chief and Arbiter return to Crow's Nest like canon, and when the Covenant attack, Chief, like, Chief will take out the brutes like before, but when Chief comes across Arbiter, he's with Cease. They go to rescue Marines that were trapped in the armory and evacuated them, but instead of seeing just Hornets fighting Covenant Banshees, they, instead of just seeing Hornets fighting Covenant Banshees, you will also see Green Banshees fighting as well. And the reason I said Green Banshees was because they would be Cease's Banshees helping the last of the Marines from New Mombasa. <laughs> so, god dang I lost my spot, I'm sorry. Okay. When Chief, Thel, and Sisa got to the landing zone, they fought off the Coveys trying to destroy the Pelican, and after everyone was evacuated, it would go along as cannon. Chief reactivating the bomb, and going down to the other trapped marines, making his way to the rest of the troops to stop Truth, but instead of just Warthogs, they got Spectres and Ghosts, as transportation. After dealing with the brutes on the highway and regrouping all the marines with the warhogs, ghosts, and specters, I had a lot of trouble with that line so many times, they begin the assault on the anti air cannon. With the help of elites and occasional hunters, it will go like cannon, fighting the brutes, destroying the AA defenses, fighting the flood, Artas saving them from the flood, and going to the Ark. But when they land on the Ark, they will be able to have better reinforcements and be ready for the AA cannons. With the help of Cease's ground troops, when the Dawn landed, Cease's battle cruiser landed as well, landing scorpions, wraiths, specters, warthogs, and mongooses. With the assault force ready, they went and destroyed all the brute armor emplacements and scarab. Until they got to the cartographer, where after they learned where Truth was, the Shadow of Intent and Cease's <clears throat> battle cruiser, the Shield of Redemption, that's what I named it. I thought it would have been really good to <laughs> seem like that. So, where did I... God darn, I'm sorry, I keep losing my spot. <laughs> okay, they mounted an assault on the control room. With multiple pelicans and phantoms after her some after some AA Wraith blast, the assault force had to land outside the anticipated areas, leading them to fight their ways to the towers. Chief went to one tower, Johnson went to one tower, and Arbor and Cisa went to the other. After fighting their way to each of the towers, I'm sorry. <laughs> After fighting their way to each of the towers, shutting them down except Johnson's, with his comms reporting brute reinforcements, Chief, Arbor, and Cisa had to go and reinforce Johnson's battle group. After leaving both towers, leaving both towers, Chief, Arbor, and Cisa fight through the brute reinforcements and deactivate the last tower. Once the last tower is deactivated and the shield falls, Artas circles to hover the control, the control room until High Charity crashes into the Shadow of Intent, making Artas retreat through the shield with, or with the shield a redemption, attempting to cover the Shadow of Intent from further damage and taking out any more Flood Rocks that came off of High Charity. After Chief left the control tower and dealt with the Flood, Arbiter boarded a pelican, but Cisa decided to stay on the ground to help Chief while the Redemption and Pelicans dropped supplies and vehicles to engage the last column of brutes. With the limited forces left of Truth 
The column of a scorpion, wraith, two specters, two warthogs, and three mongooses were able to take out the defenses until the covey sent in their final trump card. Two scarabs. But with the help of banshees, phantoms, and hornets, the UNSC and the covey's separatists were able to destroy the scarabs and move in to secure the area and send a squad to finally kill Truth. Now, I was gonna say in this timeline, with the Shield of Redemption, the Flood won't appear in the control room since anywhere the Flood getting there was being destroyed by some phantoms. They, the end of the Redemption, after they were, <coughs> after they were clear of the Shadow of Intent. So in this timeline, in this timeline, we're gonna be giving Chief and Arbor the ability to call in ODSTs, Spec Op Elites, and Hunter Captains. The reason I said ODSTs and Hunter Captains, well, you get ODSTs, but the Hunter Captains, I already think, I feel like that the Covey Separatists would have Hunters and Hunter Captains since Halo Wars 2 had released the new rank for Hunters. So, let me get back into the story. When they made it to the final push, some ODSTs and Spec Op Elites pulled out snipers while Hunter Captains fired their cannons at the heavily armored troops. Like, let's say, the Brute Chieftain, all the Brutes that had the heavy battle armor. But after a while, not long after the fighting began, the Covenant did not last that long. Until everybody started standing in front of the light bridge to the truth. The encounter with truth ends like cannon. Truth is stabbed by Arbiter. Chief deactivates the arc, but the flood does not sprout giant tentacles through the floor, since the flood biomass could not get to the control room. And so, since they couldn't get to the control room, all the surviving troops just literally walked right out. <clears throat> since the since the flood wasn't able to get there, the troops just walked right out, just so they could finally deal with the flood. Now, we're near High Charity, with the only ship being the Shield of Redemption. With <clears throat> with the ship, the only usable ship being the Shield of Redemption, it doesn't have the firepower to deal with all of High Charity. So. Chief had to go by himself through High Cherry to find Cortana while everyone was being evacuated. And as before, it'll go as cannon. It'll go like cannon with Chief burning through the flood to find Cortana and after he found Cortana, he meets up with Arbor, but this time he's with Sisa so he could be able to escape with, with a pelican that was on a mountain of biomass. <clears throat> now, this after dealing a big blow to the Flood by destroying High Charity, Chief and Arbiter go to the new installation to finish the Flood once and for all. And as canon, they finish the fight, Warhog run unchanged, Chief being stuck in outer space unchanged, but when Lord Hood did his speech, Sisa and Thel attended the memorial, and even Sisa said a few words to remember Chief. We started as enemies. But we ended as allies. Rest in peace, Spartan. You have earned it. When Lord Hood and Thel had their talk, it went as it would in the game, with Thel saying, Words so easy. And then both leaving with Artas to form the Swords of St. Helios. In the end, Sisa rises through the ranks to work closely with Artas and the Arbiter to unite all the St. Heli clans under one flag. No more warring against each other. Just peace. <clears throat> and that's gonna have to do for this theory. Let me know what you all think of this theory in the comments and let me know what you'd like to see next. I honestly had a lot of fun making this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna be making more of these theories in the future. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's pretty much all I gotta say, so thank you all for watching, and I will see you next one. See you around!